Welcome to 5 Minutes VHDL Podcast, the podcast where we talk about VHDL and hardware design. In this, uh, in this episode, I want to answer um, to my friend, uh, a guy that um, wrote me an email, and he asked me, I need a clock. <laughs> this made me... <laughs> uh, this made me laugh <laughs> in some sense because I need a clock. <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's a very strange question for me. Anyway, uh, the the point is is designing a PVM PWM, and uh, is designing the PWM on FPGA uh, on a ZinQ FPGA from Xilinx. And uh, the FPGA is um, is assembled on a on a board. So his simulation is uh, is okay, is perfect, and in his simulation he is uh, using a emulated clock in the test bench, and all the things are okay. Now he need to uh, implement uh, the 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 design into the FPGA into the board. So he needs a clock, and this this question is struggling him how, because he doesn't know how to generate a clock in uh, in the FPGA. Now, when we uh, design something, we used to simulate the design, and we used to put our design into a test bench, and. In the test bench, we provide all the signal uh, the design needs in order to um, generate uh, and simulate the, the design behavior. In this case, we use to uh, provide a clock and reset in the test bench. A very easy way and simple way is to de- declare the signal clock initialize the signal with 0 or 1 and then in the in the concurrent section of the architecture the uh, the simple uh, assignment clock less than equal not clock after i don't know 5 nanosecond generate a clock that go up and down every 5 nanosecond in this case from rising to rising or falling to falling edge we have 10 nanosecond this is a 100 megahertz clock, 10 nanosecond clock of period. And this is a very simple in the, in the test bench. But how we can generate a clock in a board? This is a, the problem that struggle our friend. <laughs> the point is, when we use an FPGA or an NASIC in a board, we need to provide the clock outside, from, from the outside of the FPGA. In every board we can buy from a vendor, in the board is provided one or more oscill- oscillator that give the clock to the to the FPGA. We need to connect the clock port of our design to the clock pin that in the board is connected to the local oscillator, to the board oscillator. Uh, generally, when we we buy uh, a board there are more than one oscillator on the board it depends on the complexity of the board and but for sure when you buy a board at least one oscillator is present on the board so when you need a clock you can be sure that you will be able to connect your clock your design clock to the pin connected to the oscillator. Our friends <laughs> wrote to me that he tried to generate a clock using the clock wizard uh, of the um, uh, of Vivado. Well, the clock wizard can instantiate uh, the PLL inside the FPGA, but a PLL needs an external clock because a PLL generate uh, an output clock from uh, a reference clock by dividing or multiplying the clock. So, for for instance, if you have a 10 MHz clock and you need inside your design a 100 MHz clock, you can use the external 10 MHz reference clock 
feed the PLL and generate the clock multiplied by 10, generating 100 MHz clock. But inside the FPGA, you can't find a clock as it is. Even if in the modern FPGA, some some technology provide a clock inside the FPGA, but it's a very particular case. This is a case where uh, the, the clock is uh, provided inside an FPGA that contains a um, not-so-accurate uh, oscillator. This is why if you uh, need the FPGA to, um, for instance, uh, uh, control uh, serial to parallel port or some interface, uh, um, very simple interface, uh, sometimes you don't need a very accurate clock. So in this case, you can use this, um, this reference clock inside without the need of uh, an external oscillator. But this is a very, very particular case. In the 99.9% of the, of the cases, you have your FPGA into a board and in the board uh, are provided one or more external uh, oscillator that give you the possibility to uh, use the clock. Another thing is the clock on the board is provided to the FPGA in the, in the dedicated pin. This is because every FPGA uh, have a dedicated pin to the clock. This is why the clock is a very particular signal. We use this signal to run our design and we have to be sure that no, uh, no bumping on the clock are present. Think about it. If you have a clock that goes up and down every uh, 10 nanoseconds, so 100 MHz clock, your design is designed to run at 100, uh, 100 megahertz, and you provide the clock from an external oscillator. If our clock would have a bumping, for instance, when goes down, goes down and then goes up for three nanoseconds, for instance, our FPGA can read this, uh, this signal as a, a clock of three nanosecond period, even if it is a uh, it is a mistake. In this case, our design for a, for a small time period should run with a period of 3 nanoseconds, that is, uh, about, uh, is about 300 megahertz. In this case, we should run at 3 nanoseconds, that is three times faster than 100 megahertz. In this case, the, um, the design can have problem because if our design can run to 100, but in our static analysis, we know that we can run up to, I don't know, 120 megahertz. If we provide a faster clock, the result of our design is unknown. So we can generate something. If you, we have, for instance, a, a finite state machine that have the, uh, the control logic that goes to a unknown status, we can lock our design in unknown status. But this could happen if we have a counter or some uh, complicated logic. So we, we have to avoid this. So I hope I answered to our friend and talk soon. Ciao.